Hello and welcome to FX Street Currency in Play. I am Matt Brown and I'm joined down the line by Ed Matz from MatrixTrade.com. How are you today, Ed? I'm oh, very good. Yourself, Matt? Yeah, very well, very well. Market's moving around a bit. So with no further ado, let's have a quick look at the current trends, top trends. Uh, well, I'm going to pick out Euro dollar, um, seeing a bit of movement on the back of Euro GDP. Uh, it's around the 117 level, but it has whipsawed around quite a bit over the last half an hour. Um, any, any take on those GDP numbers? Um, yeah, slight improvement. You know, yeah. well, um, it's the same story, really. There are signs of economic resurgence in Europe. We've got not a full ECB tomorrow, but we got some. We may get some further information of mm -hmm. as the obvious question of of taper more likely than interest rate rises coming out there. And the euro dollar is um, something we've talked about before. is is way out of line with its its interest rate differential. Bonds are starting to go pretty well bid. In other words, trying to break down, mm -hmm. which is an interesting given the taper story um, and how that sits with that. Um, but one sixteen eighty, um, it's going to go on the euro. The question is, is it going to go today before FOMC? I don't think so. Is it going to go after FOMC? I actually don't think so. I think we're seeing a slowing of the price action. I think it will break and the world and his mother is going to get short and then it's a question of volatility. And I think that's for us the story over the next uh, week, more importantly the next month to three months is volatility. We're going to see volatility like many people haven't seen before. So it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, mm -hmm. So today it's like rearranging those deck chairs on the Titanic with the FOMC minutes coming out. Fantastic. And um, another data point um, affecting sterling today, uh, jobs data a little bit stronger than expected. So we've seen a bit of an uplift in sterling um, now around the 129 handle. A uh, bit of a take on that as well. Well, it's the best uh, employment numbers we've had since 1975. So, you know, Brexit, it must be a good thing, or even uncertainty over Brexit must be a good thing. Um, it's the same story. I think actually it's interesting because it looks like cable might have a small lead on the euro dollar in, in terms of breaking down. Um, I, I think this might be a bear trap, get down closer, get below 129, get people short and then see it ramp back up. But I think it's telling us something. This baby is rolling over. Perhaps more interesting is, is euro sterling because that's approaching it. It's, it's, very close to some of our big targets, and it's very getting closer to that famous fat finger high. So um, there's a lot. You can't just look at cable on its own. It's particularly obviously a dollar-related play or US-related play. You've got to look at euro sterling because that's telling us something. Understood. We'll pick up on the dollar index and dollar yen in the next few slides. So continuing a theme we had you in the studio last week. Um, so just walk us through some of the slides you've kindly bought us today. Um, well, first off, can you see there the cartoon? Yep, the cartoon. Uh, we have uh, Donald Trump uh, as God or Zeus in the sky talking about volatility and yelling there, uh, eternal uptrend or crash. And a matter of days now, not minutes, in reference to the minutes tonight, I assume. Which should we choose? So uh, what does this all mean for our viewers? Um, well, I'm not saying that Donald Trump's a volatile character, although many... <laughs> I mean, if you saw his press conference last night, well, mm -hmm. anyway, that's beside the point. Um, we're coming to a crossroads, um, not just from in terms of our view of the market and the stock market and the dollar obviously trying to break back up. Um, we're coming to a crossroads in terms of global monetary policy. You've got a number of central banks, ECB on the verge of taper. You've got some stories coming out of Japan. You know, is this, this the end of deflation? Are they going to start? unwinding quantitative easing but more importantly and the one that leads obviously is the US and um, you've got minutes today and you know, are they going to say anything the focus is going to be cl clearly on whether the timing we've seen the nature of balance sheet reduction they've started talking about that it's the timing um, and as to whether we're going to you know are they going to go straight ahead in September as um, like Dudley intimated on Monday um, and a number of other people quite keen to get on with it, even to the extent of holding off rate rises, which, you know, is our view. There will not be any more rate rises in the U.S., certainly not this year for, you know, the eternal uptrend versus crash reasons. But a lot of what the Fed does now, I think, will determine not just people's sentiment and view of interest rates and the U.S. economy and where it's going, but it's going to have a big impact the extent to which they bring on balance sheet reduction, even if there are no signs of a pickup inflation. Um, 
uh, I've got a really interesting slide to show you about FOMC minutes later, making a comparison with previous time. But essentially, the market is of the opinion, very definite opinion, that we're at a crossroads. And what that means is, you know, either which way it goes, it's obviously not, not going to turning right into the crash, mm -hmm. in our humble opinion. But what it means is there's volatility and that people will start positioning one way or the other. You've seen some premature signs in the US um, indices, uh, people getting uh, bearish prematurely. I think they're going to get taken out um, and then you know, probably come to the view of the eternal view. But what it's doing is saying the markets are unstable. They're inherently unstable. Um, if you switch to the next slide. Yeah, if we move forward. Uh, top left. Um, well, this is the interest rate differential. Mm -hmm. you know, keep making market markets are a continuum so i'm sorry if I, I repeat myself but it's all in the context of the same story you know in our you know, i say in our humble opinion we're quite clearly of the view that the u.s stock market's moving into crash we've been bullish all the way and we're still bullish but we think it's going to turn and it's going to inject hyper levels of volatility um, until then the currencies are driven quite clearly by their interest rate differentials particularly mm -hmm. the far end we're talking about not interest rate policy so much, but inflation when we talk about the 10-year differentials. That's a US note versus, say, the German Bund for the euro dollar. And you can see quite clearly that of the three, dollar Canada is tracking its differential quite clearly. Dollar, dollar yen is very close mm -hmm. and see still pretty much in line. But it's the euro. Euro dollar stands out, doesn't it, with that differential? It's that sentiment gap again where people have got themselves overly long um, and what is interesting is, is, you know, the point I made before is one of the reasons for that sentiment gap is the fund managers or if you like the asset value, mm -hmm. uh, asset holders, uh, because of the bond. Now, it's interesting because the bond is trying to break back into its old range, as you can see, reflected by that, the, the white line top left that shows um, it's preciously close to breaking up. If that gets back in, then the euro is going to be hammered. And then it's a question talking about volatility, I think. The question very much for the next month or two to three months is the scale of volatility, not just in the stock markets, which we think will go absolutely ballistic in terms of volatility, yeah. but and also in currencies, whether that, that volatility will impact the dollar or the foreign exchange market as much. And, so, and certainly, Ed, just to interrupt, we've, we've seen a lot of hedge funds being long the euro. This is fast money. So if we see a retracement of, of that trade, then that leads to volatility because these are leverage hedge fund traders trying to get out of this uh, euro dollar position in a hurry. Yeah, it's not it's not day it's not just day traders, you know, who will be short one minute and long the mm -hmm. next. It is you know people who are like typically hedge funds. You're quite right. And the classic case is obviously the dollar yen uptrend in 2011 that was fueled by hedge funds just buying and holding. There are people holding euros um, with the intention of holding. And the reason primarily is the shift in the interest rate differential, and hence why you see the sentiment gap. If it starts to come back down, I mean, it will take out 116.80. It's too obvious a level. It. The question is, is whether it's just 16.10 or, or even 114.80. If you get down to 114.80, it doesn't stop it being a correction, but really puts a question mark about this interest rate differential shift, and more importantly, whether those guys who want to hold, whether they'll be able to hold. And the answer comes partly from the stock market. If the stock markets get hit in the next month or two, then you know the bund, uh, bund is going to fly. Mm -hmm. Means they'll be um, whacking. Um, uh, it'd be quite interesting to see what the fallout in terms of interest rate differentials and currencies and the like. Yeah, we'll see if that rotation play happens from equities into bonds. So moving on, uh, FOMC minutes, as we've already discussed, out today at 7 p.m. Uh, UK time. Uh, just talk us through this slide here, Ed. Yeah, it's two slides here. First, the one on the left shows you what the euro dollar typically does into FOMC minutes. The point at matrix trade, what we try to do is, or what we do is, identify what we believe is driving a market. If it's driving a market, it's not just in terms of the fundamentals or the interaction, it's sentiment. So what is dwelling most on people's minds today, not just the day traders, but those hedge fund managers, it's FOMC minutes. And so it's no surprise that into FOMC minutes, something like the euro dollar or most markets follow a typically similar pattern. And you can see it gets sold off, holds into the minutes and rallies. That's why I'm skeptical as to whether 1680 will go or, or be, you know, be sustained in the short term, but roll back into consolidation. But perhaps 
I think more interestingly is that you look at the slide on the right. Mm -hmm. This is what the euro dollar did, and it's matching it tick for tick into the minutes from the December 2015 minute. Uh, minutes, which was uh, December 2015, was when the ra um, the Fed raised rates for the first time, and it, it's it's really interesting because you know talking about a price action doesn't just match price action for the sake of it; it matches it often for the same reasons, the same drivers, the same sentiment, the same fundamentals, the intermarket relationships, all that comes together, and it came together in December 2015 when the Fed raised rates because of the expectation of inflation, which has been partly justified, not to the extent they were looking at, but also interesting in those minutes, one of the glaring things about those minutes was the concern about persistent low inflation mm -hmm. and whether really they should raise rates as fast as they expected because inflation hasn't wasn't showing the same signs of pickup. Move on to you know, August 2017, and we have the same story. We have balance sheet reduction, which is a proxy for raising rates. It's tightening. At the same time, we have a Fed that's concerned about persistent low inflation. Inflation not moving the same extent, not as even as the market, but or even as the Fed. And we've seen CPI come out five times in a row in the US, saying that inflation is not rising as much as people think. Bring that back, it's a very similar story, what happened in December 2015, given that the conditions are similar to what happens normally. Euro dollar gets sold off the day before the FOMC minutes and then rallies through your, um, the FOMC minutes, mm -hmm. rallies aggressively at first and then rolls back. I, I think that's quite a good story. It's a range trade, 116.80, 119.10, and then they will break down. Okay, and uh, let's have a look at your next slide that you have for us. Three Japanese earthquakes. This isn't the Richter scale graph, I assume, or chart, I should say. Uh, just quickly tell us what's going on here. I mean, it's, it's dollar yen. Um, mm -hmm. This is my favorite slides of all time. In fact, when I uh, get asked to do presentations on you know, some of our approaches, and this is a slide I always pull out, it's dollar yen. We're talking about an earthquake that potentially is coming in the stock market mm -hmm. in the next one to three months. Um, and here we have a chart showing what dollar yen likes to do on earthquakes, 1923, 1995, and since 2011. What is amazing, truly amazing, is you know going back six years, dollar yen is doing the same pattern, same thing as it did after the two previous earthquakes. You know you can't believe the impact of the earthquake in 2011 is still moving dollar yen. But what it says. It's the interaction of the fundamentals, the intermarket, the technicals, the sentiment related to those uptrends, aggressive uptrends, and how they reverse is repeating itself. That, to me, I mean, people may disagree. These are three blindingly similar charts mm -hmm. following the earthquake. And you can see what happens in the previous two. It rallied like this back to 11890, the equivalent, and then dumped. Now, if you wanted um, any evidence to support the view of... Um, Stock, mar uh, stock market crash and how it impacts currencies, then have a look at this one chart alone and it, it tells you the story. Yep, so that's dollar yen. And moving on to your final chart, uh, still with dollar yen, but on the hourly chart, just to explain a lot going on here, but just simplify this for our viewers, yep. if you may. Yeah, people always say there's lots going on my charts. Um, <laughs> my charts are a work in progress, so I don't want to strip out everything that I'm doing because there's some interesting things going on. It's there as a reminder to me, but show you some of the things we look at, trying mm -hmm. to identify similar price action, wave counts, channels, and what's really going on. Um, it's basically this dollar. We talked about the, the dump on that that earthquake dump, stock mm -hmm. market related decline. Um, it's, it's dolly and is setting up for that move, but it's got a fake out to the upside first. And the question, the real question, is the, is the timing and how far it can go in the next two weeks. And I think we've seen today, hopefully we can pop up to 111.40 and start backing off 109.80, which is in line, if you recall, with that euro dollar FOMC minute chart. Mm -hmm. so goes back up, the dollar starts softening again, and everyone says, what's all the fuss about? And then dollar yen should go again to the upside. Now, what is really interesting about dollar yen, uh, I, I, you know, I'm a bit of an anorak in some of these things, what is really interesting about dollar yen is in the last two to three days, you've seen it start moving back in line with the stock market. Mm -hmm. It's been totally out of sync, driven entirely by its differential, and that's telling you another thing. If dollar yen is moving not just with its differential now, but with the stock market, hence the dollar yen rally, then it's saying the correlations are coming back. The key correlations come back. And 
the moment the key correlations come back, Matt, is when you get to a crash. It's you have the end of a trend. Understood. Again, trend correlations break down as that trend reverses, they come back together. And you know, the writing is on the wall. As to how far it will go, I mean we're looking to we're long, looking to throw out one eleven forty if we can get that high, back mm -hmm. down to nine eighty, play it on the upside. And then the question is how far? Will it take out one fourteen fifty five and stop people out like we expected to do on the stock market and then dump? Or if it starts fading around the um you know, above 1, 113 even, or levels like that, then it's going to say, well, watch out, this baby's moving to the downside much faster than we thought. Everyone's of the view it's a range trade, they're right. Um, some savvy people have noticed how the Bank of Japan is on the bid. Have you noticed that green line across there? That's one reason why it's yep. Um But it's going to roll over, and the Bank of Japan is not going to be able to get in the way of stock market crash. Understood. So lots to look out and play for in the yes. next couple of weeks and um, finally we'll just touch on the calendar we've already spoke about it the FOMC minutes that's the key one to look out for at seven o'clock uh, just to briefly summarize then euro dollar around the M uh, FOMC minutes you expect it to trade upwards or dollar I expect to go back down yeah it normally um, dollar normally ramps into FOMC minutes because they expect normally the over discounting of future rate rises um, the same thing with the balance sheet reduction um, and then, you know, people say, well, what's all the fuss about? Yeah, I mean, and, and then and they don't get the gratification of, of a Fed tightening or they get the dis, what's the opposite of gratification, the disappointment of the Fed actually expressing concerns about inflation, rightly so. And so that's why it tends to go, the dollar tends to come back down. Dollar Canada is actually interesting because Dollar Canada has gone out of sync with its differential in the last two to three days. The, the, the decline in dollar Canada and the reversal we've seen has been driven by the differential. But in the last 48 hours, anyone got a chart, check it out. It started to break away. In other words, this rally, once 27, 7 by number, is, um, is out of sync. So it's saying it can't be sustained. So watch out dollar Canada, even if it's by, it looks like it's spiked a bit further, 127.90, and then back off and get people um, overly excited again to the downsides. So, um, yeah, it's all very, very, I've been in the market donkey years, um, but there are a few exciting times as we're, we're in or we're approaching. It's, it's great times. Good stuff. Well, on that note, tra traders, look out for Euro dollar, dollar CAD, two things to look out for today at 7 p.m. Ed Matz joining us down the line from matrixtrade.com. Thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure, Matt. Have a good one, yeah?